and I'll always come back to Seattle. Lately, I feel like I have been avoiding all of my responsibilities to spend time with people, which is why until now, the last of my Christmas decorations were still up. All of the unpacked luggage from my trip has now mixed with the remains of four to six outfits that I've put together, strewn across my floor. My sink is filling up. I haven't taken that bag of donations to Goodwill. I haven't sold those clothes on Depop or my Instagram story. I haven't listed that piece of furniture on Facebook Marketplace. I haven't washed my floors in a while. I haven't worked on that aging up video that I do every year. I haven't been editing my freelance projects in a timely manner, but I have filled up my social battery with fellowship at Stand Up Open Mic Nights. I FaceTimed so many of my long distance friends. I've wished dear people heartfelt happy birthdays. I've hung out with the many people here I'd like to deepen my connections with. I've expanded my friendships with new acquaintances. Somebody crawled into my Tumblr DMs to thank me for the motto I shared on here a while ago, which is Ohio, only handle it once. And it's something that my dad has worked to internalize. But the credit is actually due to my mom. I have not been doing that. I have not been doing that. But I did handle five of my closest friends with care for six days and five nights last week. And that felt amazing. I have like really high social needs. And I feel like I know now better than ever, like what really charges my social battery up and being on that trip to Oaxaca with all of them. I went for my birthday. Really solidified for me why it is that I prioritize friendship. Like I, I don't ever feel like I regret placing my social life so high on my priorities. Like it always makes sense to triage it that way. And I brought a handful of people together in a city none of us had ever been to. Not a single person there knew everyone. I had a friend from high school, a friend from college, a friend from the internet, two friends from Seattle, and everyone just enjoyed each other's company so much. There is just nothing in life I enjoy quite like good company. And I think hedonism or like pleasure or like what feels satisfying has shifted so much over my life. At one point in time, it was like my performance academically and like really being productive, like made me feel redeemed. But yeah, when I feel the highest, when I feel the most me, when I feel the most like regulated, is when I'm spending time with my chosen people, like the, the people that really get me and are a good hang. And it's been a meandering path to find those people here. And I knew it would be. Like, I'm, I'm not surprised. Like, I don't know if you remember some of the very first oversharing vlogs, but I very much said this, this little Seattle rehoming project was a freshmaning experience. Like it makes you, it feels like you're going through orientation week and your eyes are darting around for like, who's gonna be your people, you know? And it's like, you know, one of the people I went to orientation with, one of the people I clung to, we're still mutuals on Twitter, which I consider, and occasionally they'll give me a like, which I consider to be quite successful for the people that you hang out with at orientation. If you went to college and you went to an orientation and you made friends there, let me know down below if you're still friends with them or if you're not. Let's get a little poll going. When YouTube releases a survey or a poll functionality within the comment section, I'll be vindicated. I think surveying can be an art and it also can be a performance. And that's why I like going on stage and doing stand up because that's not a time where my social battery is filled up by like deep intimate connection, but it's filled up with like the joy and the power of like anonymity revealing itself like you get little samples from the audience like tonight I asked if anyone had a crush and nobody did but I did ask what they thought of Pisces and I got some answers so let me know down below what's up with your orientation friends but um yeah I knew this would be a freshmaning experience and I was just talking to a new person in my life about how I'm now in my junior year and she didn't quite get what I was understand what I was saying there um, with that little analogy, but I was like, yeah, I'm like midway through my junior year here. And so the people that belong in my life are starting to firm up, you know, like the people that are for me are around me and the people that are not for the most part are not. And that's what I wanted to get to here. And I feel like 
two and a half years into Seattle, if I may provide a little update because this is, was this was like kind of the original point of the oversharing series was to document this process. Like I feel a newfound sense of belonging, especially when I'm with other people. I can feel it alone in the car today when I was driving across the bridge and I saw both mountains on either side of me and multiple lakes. Come on, how often can you say you see two sets of like rocky mountains spanning hundreds of miles and multiple lakes? Seattle is an Ismian wonder. I am obsessed with it. The geography of this city I've always belonged to, but now I'm trying to populate it with community. But sometimes I do wonder if this is just another fool's errand at like emotionally regulating myself. Like, is this, is this going to like emotionally stunt me in any way? Because when I was talking about you know, productivity and studying and like academic performance bringing me the most pleasure. Like, I think that was a way I was emotionally regulating myself was like to make myself feel good and to self-soothe and to sort of like check myself in. I would, you know, see the grades and see the test scores and like wait for the accolades and the praise. And that kept me going like that kept, kept me afloat. So maybe now that like friendship is the core value and motivation in my life and like my relationships, Maybe that's just the way I'm emotionally regulating. And somebody also crawled into my Tumblr DMs to kind of like ask me about that. Like, am I just escaping myself and sort of like using people as a crutch or a fix for like my inability to find like stability within myself? And sometimes I worry about that. I'm like, I would love to reach an ultimate point of like, well, no, I never want to reach a point of like, I don't need people. We are always going to need people. You are kidding yourself if you're saying you don't need people. We're social creatures, like human beings. Like if you've watched the show alone, you know, we're not meant to just be on our lonesome. And even if you think you are alone, it's like you are truly never alone. Like think of all the little tiny microscopic interactions you have to further yourself. Like unless you're growing all your food alone and getting all your seeds alone. And I don't know. You think you just fell out of a coconut tree? <laughs> You exist in the context of all in which you live and what came before you. I go back and forth all the time, but I'm just like, if this is just another like cope, like hanging out with people being a cope, I feel like this is one of the better copes. Like I kind of just feel like no matter what, I'm just cycling through copes. Like there's gonna be something I'm leaning on to emotionally regulate me. This is better than like, I don't know alcohol or like binging TV or we're all using our phones to emotionally regulate ourselves super poorly. Like your phone kind of does the op opposite. It dysregulates you. I, n I rarely, rarely feel like the long-term result of spending time with my friends is emotional dysregulation. And I think this might sound a little absurd to be musing on like, oh guys, I'm worried that like long-term there's going to be consequences and bad effects to like me hanging out with my friends. I'm not like truly concerned about that but something else i enjoy is being naive like i actually enjoy being naive and asking questions that are very innocent and like unsupposing like let's re-investigate things that we've taken for granted as true i'm always seeking truth and intimacy that's a, that's another confession is that like i crave intimacy maybe we all do. And I'm not talking about sex. I'm not talking about just like erotic intimacy. I'm just talking about like depth. I'm talking about finding a new reach within another person within yourself. Like I, I think a lot of times we think of like our life and improvement being like going up, growing vertically, but I like intimacy feels like you're sinking deeper. I genuinely just feel like I am here on earth to get to know people. And that's so simple. But when I was on that trip, everyone was just such good company to each other. Like we just enjoyed the time so much. I was like, this is the reason we're here to do this. And so that type of realization makes it a lot easier for me to be like, okay, all of the rest of this doesn't matter. In fact, it does. Like a clean room does help you feel more at peace, but like this being messy does not hurt my well being like me being lonely does. So to me, anything I do to avoid loneliness just feels like paramount above all else. I think there is 
I think there is obviously a balance to it and this kind of thing I'm like it'll be gotten to when it needs to be gotten to and tonight I came home from an open mic early so that so I could watch the original Talented Mr. Ripley before the Andrew Scott version comes out and so that I can watch the Broly Deschanel video and fully understand what she's talking about because I love yearning media. If you're ready for confessionals with me, please give this video a like. One like is one cope for me. Good morning, it is a couple days later and I just made a call to participate in the little favor economy, which is something I introduced on TikTok. It's really just the gift economy, but yeah, it's always a little bit nerve wracking in a friendship to make a breakthrough or like cross a new frontier. Oddly enough, I have borrowed subscribers cars here in Seattle for like camping trips, but I've never borrowed a friend's car. And I just made the call to ask and Sean was down. So now I don't have to pay like 50 bucks to rent a car on get around for a very special errand that I'm running today. Junior year, we are leveling up here. Sammy's on her way to crazy. And I'm just sitting feeling lucky. And I just slipped on my it all. I didn't quite get to close the loop on the car borrowing situation because the errand was a bust. But there's an intimacy to someone letting you borrow their car. Like, it's, I've, I've driven my friends' cars, you know, for a handful of people. But that was when they were in the vehicle. It's so different when someone just gives you the keys and they trust you. Especially when you all well know that I, uh, let's stop in here for some good lighting and less wind. That I full well crashed my car when I moved here. Um, it wasn't fully my fault. There's now a sign there and a new stop sign there. But leaning on your friends like that just creates this new texture of trust that you really can't get to without that. That was an exercise in building intimacy. It sounds perverted if I'm just like, I go everywhere to build intimacy. No, it's like, I've just noticed that underlying it all, that's kind of like the quest that I'm on. And then when I really analyze it, I'm like, oh, plain and simple, that's why I did that thing. Um, in this case, it wasn't like I borrowed his car just to expand our friendship. It's like the app I usually use uh, was glitching out. So it kind of pushed me to do it. I probably wouldn't have done it otherwise, but I'm like glad it glad it did because um, it's nice to rely on each other and our community instead of like having everything be so commod uh, commodified. I spoke about that on my TikTok. <laughs> yeah. Yay. <laughs> What a night, you guys. Cannot wait to tell you all about it. I uh, went to a concert alone tonight to prove to myself on that one person in my Tumblr box that I can achieve emotional regulation on my own sometimes. But um, this was a night that I had planned to build self-intimacy. If you've been watching me for a while, you know I'm a very ardent artist state supporter. I think it's so important to take your inner, inner self out and get to know yourself better. And so like, this is how I know that like, I'm not someone who has the crux of not being able to do things alone. I, I go to concerts alone. Do I prefer to go to concerts with someone else? Hell yeah, I do. But what I don't like doing is bringing someone to a concert that doesn't care about the artist. They can learn to care about the artist by the end of the show, but I just like, for me, like live music is a very, sacred experience and I don't want someone to be there for me. I want them to be there because they're also invested And in what happens if people go to concerts when they're not really invested is that they end up in the back talking, which is what happened at tonight's show just for a little bit. But on the whole, it was like, it was an immaculate set. It was just so acoustically prioritized. Like Ryan was wearing headphones the entire set. Like the sound quality was so crisp. And I didn't even have to wear earplugs in that. Like the sound wasn't so loud that like it was beyond my capacity. It was, I was just enamored. I was just enamored, but I gotta, um, 
I gotta catch transit back and then I'll tell you why actually I didn't end up at the concert alone. Okay, I'm not a floor sitter, but I need to be for this reveal because this artist date actually ended up being a bit of a boondoggle as all the greatest ones are in my experience um, because Seattle again and again shows up for me and like tells me that I'm meant to be here, that I belong here, not just geographically, but like socially. I'm picked up time and time again. Like I was running late to the concert. It didn't seem like he had an opener, which is rare. So I looked online and it said he really went on at like 8.15. Um, it was 8.10 and I was still like 15 minutes away from the venue. And I get there, there's no one outside. So I'm like, damn, they must've already started. It must not be a very full show. And the doors are closed, it's dark inside. I'm like, fuck, did he reschedule? I didn't get an email. I didn't see anything. I go to his Instagram, there's nothing. And there's one other person that was walking behind me up to the venue and I'm like, hey, like, did it get canceled? And then I open my freaking AXS Access app and it's at a different venue. There's two show boxes in Seattle, one's Soto and one's normal. I didn't know they even had to. I thought it was just the show box Soto because I'm only a junior here. I don't know everything, I'm not a PhD student, so, I fucked up and this person also fucked up. They grew up here. So I was like, I'm feeling vindicated, you know, much like my car crash, you know, not, uh, I wasn't the only one to make this blunder. And it was kind of cosmic because we both got there late at the exact same time. We were the only two people that seemed to have made this error. And we both had the exact same reaction. We were scrambling. They drove, so they offered me a ride, which was, so magnanimous, like a stranger, a pure stranger, right place, right time, had known me for all of like 47 seconds. I must have worked on my intimidating aura because, you know, God is good. <laughs> let go, let God. They say that it's not a good test of compatibility, just the type of music that you listen to, but at least it grants you a little veil of trust, enough for me to get in this person's car. And we talked about the Bay Area and my junior year here and driving in Seattle, me totaling my car. Like we talked about the old neighborhood I used to live in cause they work there. And actually at one of my favorite spots that I had been on like dates at. And I was like, oh, this is just so synchronous. We talked about Ryan Beatty's like Brockhampton era, if you're familiar. And like we found parking, we were scurrying, but we made it. And I just felt so provided for like two weeks ago, Two days went by where I didn't realize I had lost my wallet. Nobody had charged anything. My, my credit card number declined a couple times online and on Apple Pay. And I called the company and someone had placed a hold on it. And I was like, I didn't even know someone else could do that. Okay, I just convinced Chase to give me the phone number of the person that called. And I just rang them up. And it was this dad in the neighborhood I was walking around with my friend on Saturday. And he said he was walking at dusk and he found my wallet and he figured he better pick it up before someone else does. And so now after my book club tonight, I get to go walk over and pick it up. So I am really protected here in Seattle. Good things always happen to me. I was, I was like, who does that happen to? Who, whose wallet falls through the pocket of their trench coat, which has had a hole in it and had always hypothesized about this happening, but never had theoretically materialized. So I'd given up on my hypothesis it falls out on the ground and someone retrieves it for you there was another time i went on an artist date to a comedy show exploration live which i hope that i've turned some of you on to because it is that good and um there's a person sitting alone so i asked if i can sit next to them and they're like oh what, what made you come out i was like i'm on an artist date if you know what that is and sh and she was like yeah i do actually i'm on week nine of the artist's way and i was like Pfft because we're doing the artist way right now in my Patreon book club. And I'm like, 
of course. So then we sit there and talk for 20 minutes straight. And that was the week in the artist way where I was not allowed to do, it was media deprivation week where you're not allowed to like scroll social media or like consume anything. So I had nothing to do sitting there alone, but conversate with this person. And it just worked out. No one ever talks to me like this. And it was like an amazing like connection. And then just like this Ryan Beatty concert, you know, when it's over, we part ways and we didn't get each other's information because we didn't like need to. It's kind of beautiful that I'm at a point in my tenure here that I don't feel so desperate as to like, I need to cling on and like materialize something out of everything. Sometimes connections like that don't need to have a further outcome. They're just meant to sort of like make you feel in community and familiar. And this was another case of that. And like at my last apartment, there were multiple events, multiple occasions where I left my keys in the front door and I lived like on the street. You could just walk right up to my door. Twice people knocked on my door to let me know. I was like, again, who does that happen to? I've actually, going back to the wallet thing, I've lost my credit card multiple times here and had it returned to me. Like it just like statistically, I don't feel like I should be that protected. There does come a point where my recklessness goes beyond the force field that Seattle apparently has around me because a few days before this, I lost my hydro flask one too many times and it was taken and separated from its air tag. But you know what? My mindset around it is still that person needed it more than I did. And when I went to go order a new one, it was 50% off, which I'd never seen before. So still, I don't feel like a diva down. But I... I'm just handsomely rewarded for my presence here. And it's, it makes me sentimental every time because I, I hope that I'm like returning the favor, but yeah. So I was seeking self intimacy, but I ended up having a really affirming moment with a stranger. And it's just nice when you are reminded that you chose correctly. Like I, I picked right coming here and you picked right by clicking on this video, hopefully. I hope you got something out of this because that makes these a lot more enriching for me to make. I get something out of it every time, so I'll continue to make these. But let me know in the comments what you got out of this, if anything. If you've had any beloved moments with strangers or amazing concerts you've been to recently, let me know. I will see you all next time. Unless you wanna pop over Patreon. I always have a bonus video over there. Patreon's like kind of intimidating. So if you've never joined one, I have like a couple of free posts, namely the power hour playlist I made for the Oaxaca trip that I mentioned earlier, that was a bonding agent and made as a gift to my friends. Thank you so much. Cather out.